What's up, crew? Hey, team. Now, we're stoked to bring you season six on YouTube. We've got heaps more content coming your way. We've got stacks of full episodes. We've got vlogs, and we've got behind-the-scenes content. So hit that subscribe button. Hit it. And join the adventure. Join us. Adventure. Let's, let's go. go. This week on Fishing and Adventure, we're out on the west coast slaying some big fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that bend. With a population of over 450,000, it's no surprise the Waikato has its fair share of boaties and fishos. Waikato's largest city, Hamilton, is landlocked, so there's no saltwater fishing option, but New Zealand's longest river runs directly through the heart of the city, and there's definitely plenty of fish life here. I don't know, what do you reckon, Mick? Good a place as any to start off an adventure? <laughs> yeah, a bit of an interesting one. Yep. But there is plenty to be had in this river right here. Absolutely, we're down under the Fairfield Bridge in Hamilton, and. Uh, First things first, we're going to get our net in the water because part of our challenge today is to gather our own bait. Mmm, and there is some good bait to be had in here. Koi carp, mullet. Absolutely. We've got some um, banks along here. We are actually up there yesterday looking down uh, from the bridge and we could see mullet swimming around in there. So, stands to reason, we can hopefully get some mullet because they make fantastic bait, but then so too to the humble koi carp. Should we get this net in the water, Mig, and uh, see what we can grab? Oh, yes. Let's right. do it. You got the uh, disc there? Got the brake disc. Yeah, it's as good a weight as the any. rusty brake disc. I'm sure there's a few of these in the Waikato River. <laughs> <laughs> Attached to some bloody Ford Escorts and <laughs> whatnot. <laughs> like anywhere along the coast and harbours, there are still rules around net sizes and styles for rivers. Koi carp are a good species to target with a net for bait, as they are noxious species and cause a lot of damage to the native plant and fish habitat. All right, happy with that back there, Mig? Yep, <sighs> looking good, mate. Looking good? Yep, she's going to have the mother load. Well, here's hoping. All right, well, we've got a couple of hours to let that net soak, so why don't we get those wakeboards out and have a jam, mate? Sounds like a plan, mate. Sounds All like right. a plan. Who's up first, me or you? Oh, you can go first. All right, take the helm, then. I'll get my gears on. Yeah! Phew! The river gets a bit of a bad rep for safety and cleanliness, but it's actually a fantastic summertime spot to take the boat for a blast and get into some of the water sport options available. Alrighty, net time, Mick. Alrighty, mate. What are we gonna yep. have? Mullet? Oh, I'm carp, hoping. Weed? I'm guessing probably a little bit of weed. Oh, definitely gonna That'd have be weed. A Hope. Over the odd stick. Mullet and weed, the Hamilton <laughs> special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a couple of coys. A couple of coys. We knew we were gonna get some of those. We've got a little bit of bait. A bit of burley. Remember, we can't. We're legally not even allowed to let these koi carp go again because they're such yep. a pest. So, Such prolific numbers. Yep. So that means they're going to be whacked on the head and in the bin. You can't let them go. You can't kill them, let them go because of their eggs. So it's a case of keeping them. It's a nice size one. Yeah, it is a good size one. There you go, yeah. Classic koi carp, introduced species. That one is most definitely a pest, but like any fish that you, you are taking, even though these are pests, dispatch them as quickly as possible, whack them on the head, we'll get the dingbat, give them a bang on the head, kill them and then uh, use them for burly and bait. A few of these guys floating around. You do not want to be hitting that when you're boosting along at 25 knots, eh, Mig? That's it. With our river mission sorted, we're up early the next morning to make the 35-minute trip out to Raglan to continue our Waikato adventure. 
Raglan is a classic seaside surf town and is another spot which is definitely pretty special to us. This week's challenge is to land the heaviest snapper over 10 pounds using only the bait we catch ourselves. With already a few good carp in the bin, the plan was to gather a bit more bait out from Manu Bay before heading up the coast to target some of the biggest snapper that take up residence in the shallows throughout the summer months. The swell was non-existent, the wind was down and it was shaping up to be an absolute cracking day out on the water. Look them in. Yep, yep, yep. Holy crap, stop me, stop. <laughs> We're in the Waikato, and the challenge is set to land the heaviest snapper over 10 pounds using only the bait we catch ourselves. We kick things off in Hamilton with a couple of nice carp pulled out of the river and a quick little wakeboard session. We're now out from Raglan, continuing with our bait gathering so we can give ourselves the best shot at landing that challenge fish. Oh, nice easy launch and two minutes from the ramp and we're into some uh, bait action, hopefully. Continue with our bait gathering. We've got what we think are skippies or kahawai schooling up around us here. Got a few gannets going in. Good sign showing up on the raymarine, so we'll uh, persevere with a couple of lures around here, try and pick up some bait and onto the snapper grounds. What do you think, Mig? Yep. What do you got, Mick? Whole lot of whole swag of Mackies? Yeah, it feels like it. Oh, yeah, good stuff. Oh, a couple of, a couple good of good four. Oh. <laughs> might have to just lift in, I think. I think might, I'll go underneath you. Yep. Yes. Yep. How's that for bait? <laughs> That's the bait we need. Oh, cracker. Can't beat that. All four hooks. That's what the Black Magic Sabikis do. Absolutely. It make bait collecting pretty easy. With the jackbacks coming in thick and fast, the bait stocks are looking very healthy. It does pay to spend the time to get a good amount of fresh bait, especially if you're targeting big fish, as you can end up using it all on the smaller, harder feeding snapper. Oh, yes. Good shot and good car wire. Beautiful. Nice. Good size fish. Problem in the live bait tank for now, but that will make some good, flat bits of big snapper bait. See those knots? I'm pretty sure that's a skippy. Faster tail beats. These things have got more energy than an energizer battery that's been put on charge and still fully charged. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this yeah, this will be the final bit of bait we're looking for if we can get it. So the skippy are in to mix with the cowboy then. Yeah, they so are. So those cowboy workouts aren't just cows, there's there's definitely some skips in there. In front of him. Yeah. Here we go. That's what? a good bait. Walker. That's a good He's bait. A <laughs> that is a fat skinny. Look at the colours on them. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Look at the colours there. You can probably see those. The iridescent blues. Electric blue. Savage eel, corner of the mouth. Little soft bait hook. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. He did. They got a soft, they got a soft skull there. They do have a soft skull and beautiful soft flesh, which makes beautiful bait. But for now, that'll be bait gathering sorted. Too good. Too good. With enough bait in the bin, it was time to find a suitable spot for our snapper session. As there was no swell, we decided to fish the shallows close to the coast and try and tick off our challenge fish. Well, not a bad selection there, Vic. Yep, not bad. We've caught some monster snapper on a few of these baits that we've managed to collect here. Yeah, indeed we have. Uh, Kahawa is well known for its um, big snapper. Yep, yep, and Benito is probably one of the most used baits in, the, yep. in New Zealand for snaps. So. That's right. We only managed to get one of these, so we'll, um, these skippies will uh, probably just save that one until later on the day. We might have to use him for um, just cut baits and the ledger rigs later on if we need to. Yep, so the Jack Max, they're just stunning baits. You can just cut them in half, either flap them up and use them as, as sort of nice hole baits. And um, yeah, they go, they go pretty good. Yep, they'll go well on the shallows here where we are now. And same with this koi carp, just put some, take some strips off him and uh, just use big bits here to try and target these bigger snapper. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's about five metres deep, so not very deep. Yep. We've got some burley from Top Catch, so we do have that. We'll get that cranking and uh, get some of these baits in the water and see if we can't catch ourselves some reasonable snapper, Mick. Sounds How's that sound? Darn good. Darn good. Get oh, him in the yeah. drink, mate. Days like this are few and far between out west, and when fishing this close to land, it's obvious that this is one area which gets an absolute hammering from New Zealand's prevailing weather system. Although we couldn't find a lot of current, the snapper would hopefully still be around as there's plenty of bait fish, shellfish and crustaceans right the way along this coast. Oh, so a nice big snapper bait consists of one jack mackerel. I'm just going to butterfly them or flap them up. 
is taking out the backbone section. Run the knife through as if you're taking a fillet off. The more natural this plate looks, the more likely a big snapper will think it's obviously just a legit bit of fish floating down in the current there. So we get rid of that middle section there. It's a nice flappy bit of bait. Big thick gay KS hook from Black Magic. So if a big snapper with sharp, heavy jaws bites on that, it's not going to chomp through that at all. And just flick that out the back and let that sit there. Wait for a big boy to engulf it and she be scrapped on. Immediately after our first baits hit the water, we were hooking up on nice size snapper. It was only four metres deep, but they were hitting our baits right below the surface and the fishing was red hot. Although these were fantastic eating fish, we had a consequence to avoid, so we're very keen to find that 10 pound fish. Give him the old lift Yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, good. It's getting there, eh? That's it's not bad for about, what, three and a half, four metres water? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice fish. He can go back. Fish after fish. This has been absolutely insane, this fishing. Yeah. We're in probably two metres of water now because we can break back in a bit further in the shallows with the current, but... How you done? The bush, again. <laughs> <laughs> Although not conducive to our challenge, we couldn't resist jumping in the drink to have a quick look around for a crayfish or two, and also see if we could score a few fresh mussels for bait. Holy crap, stop him, man, stop him, stop him, stop him, stop him. Just go for that reef. Don't put too much heat on him, because he's only got 10k. Oh, come on, Benjamin. Just hope he doesn't get to that reef. It's not that sharp a reef, we don't think. I don't actually know. <laughs> it's oh, shallow water, though. It is shallow water. So Ben, uh, straight lining, Ben, yep. Yeah, yeah. What are we going? Mackie tail. Big Mackie tail. They're loving the Mackie tails at this spot. Mig's in the drink trying to find crayfish and shellfish. There he is. Oh, here he is. Under the boat, turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just take your time, easily. <laughs> Easy. Just relax, brother. So shallow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. 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 Oh, we just literally got here, chucked the anchor down, jump in in the drink, started firing a few baits around. Mix it over there, none the wiser. That's, that'll be bloody 12 pounds, 13 pounder, easy. And that's what we're here for, and that was on the Mackie. Yeah, so. And on a 10 kilo set, that just dealt to him. <laughs> oh, this is what happens. This is what happens when, when uh, it's panic stations. When people are fishing with two or three rods, when the cameraman's fishing. That is not better. I'm going to pull that in before a fish grabs it. He's definitely not spinning, he's got plenty of energy. He's ready to go. Nice work. Bang! Oh, that was good. That was good. Close quarters. A few very essential pieces of kit that we never leave home without are some of our tools and accessories. So good heavy duty split ring pliers. We've also got a cutter there on the side for cutting a nice heavy duty trace and also really good for getting the hook out of the fish's mouth. A good selection of knives, a couple of filleting knives here, the different options there for the different styles of filleting that you might do, and a good bait knife. Nice, short, solid blade, fantastic for icking the fish's head and also chopping through that bait. The old fishing towel, nice and easy, pack away in the old tackle box and pops out to be quite a nice usable towel for handling the fish you want to keep. Good set of scales, they're important obviously for weighing your fish, especially if you're going to release one. They're digital, it's good for us too, we're often weighing up those challenge fish and they get the measurement bang on. And the humble scissors. Yep. We go out with six pairs of these and somehow end up with one at the end of the day because they just get used so much. Important piece of kit, good for trimming up the traces and cutting through braid as well. Saves you using your knife and saves your teeth. Hey, Mr. Stingway. Oh, it's not bad, eh? Oh, ah. Wee -hee. Ooh. We're on a Waikato adventure and the challenge is set to land the heaviest snapper over 10 pounds using bait that we catch. After a little wakeboard mission on the river, 
we successfully netted some carp from Hamilton before heading out to Raglan where we've loaded up on more bait and got into a solid snapper session right in close to the coast in three metres of water. The challenge first still eludes Mig and me, but cameraman Ben did manage to land a sneaky 14 pound snapper on a jack mackerel. We're now into the evening session and hoping these big fish will come on the tube. Oh, that was a good fish, Ben. Is it? Not too bad. Oh, here he comes, yeah. <laughs> the net my mouth. Here comes the stingy. Watch the stingray come in and see if that eats him. He won't eat him, but we'll be interested to see what he does. Look at this stingray, Jerry. Look at that. That is a big old... Oh, he's going to eat my Mackie. Don't eat my Mackie, please. Hey, Mr. Stingray. <laughs> Far out. He's all go on the west coast. That is cool. Glad I'm out of the water. I have not seen a stingray do that, let alone one that big, come up to the boat and just literally come up there and just breach next to the next to the boat. That's awesome. My big bait of choice for this part of the evening is a nice flap of koi cup from the Fairfield Bridge. And uh, just flicking these baits out the back, pretty simple stuff really, but it's also a little bit challenging with the boat swirling around, so we're just fishing with these the Akuma bait feeder. Fire it out there, flick that little lever on the back, and then when the snapper picks that bait up and runs away with it, which they often do, the bigger ones, especially in the shallows, let them run, flick the reel into gear, click, and we set the hook and we uh, land our bigger fish. But yeah, it's good, good fishing at the moment, just stray lining. It's always an exciting way to fish but it also can uh, produce those bigger ones, so he's hoping to get onto those. Oh, there's a goodie. Here it comes. Oh, it's not a tense. Nice fish, though. Oh, I'm getting a run. Oh, yeah. Scott. Help me. Oh, it's not a baddie. Oh, <laughs> Guy could go close. What do you reckon, Mick? Don't know. Hey, ooh. You're not going to get the net for me. I don't see Mick rushing to get no, the net. I don't blame him. It's all right. Very good fight in the shallow water, all the same. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, yes. I think that could be the one, boys. Could be the one. But, you know, we'll give him away. Oh, crikey. Sorry, mate. Oh, you Thanks. Thanks, hop along. Yeah, hey, hop along. Yeah. All right. Ah, he's got him. He's ticked it. Oh, no, you reckon? He's knocked it. Oh, I think that's 10. I think that's definitely 10. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, man. So he just come on and hit the carp. There's the remnants. That orange must be what does it, eh? That's awesome. So we gave the fish away, and he was just over 10. Wasn't much over. I'm celebrating a bit early, but he was 10.3. So back in the drink for the 10.3 potential challenge winner. And uh, we'll see if Miggy can better that. Here he goes. Back to the shallows. <laughs> Come on, mate. Yep. Oh. Yes, mate. Get him up. Oh. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Come on, Miggy. Three keg is an eight pounder. Is he going to push past that, Mig? No, no. Come on, give me some answers, man. I don't know. What a beautiful evening, though. Look at this. Exactly. It's flattened off. It's been pretty flat all day, to be fair. No, it's a good have. fish. Come on, look, a ton of bricks, too, didn't he, Mig? He did. Cortez dealing to him, as per usual. Just get him close and I'll net him, if you like. It's a good fish, man. It's oh, a good fish. Nah. Yep, got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wee -hoo! Ooh -hoo 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 -hoo. I think He's Michael. He's quality. I think, Michael. You have to lay him over the scales. We'll have to. He is, he is every bit, wow. I think he's pretty much the same as the other one. Cobra. Cobra. Oh. Mate, she is, mate, she's 10.4. Woohoo! Miggy! 10.4. Oh, nice. Ooh, sorry, Ouch. Darren. Sorry, Darren. Ouch, my toe. Stoked. This guy's just put me in the lead. So um, we'll get him back in the drink. Nice big snap, nice and healthy. Oh, it's a good fish. It's looking like I'm being pipped at the post. Pipped at the post. Quite happily pipped at the post with this consequence, mate. Yep, he's gonna go, mate. Gonna go. Oh, yeah. Off he goes. Nice. Hey. 
Yeah. Anyway. Then I don't want to give him a high five for that. <laughs> ah, happy to see, happy to see. Good fish. Well, it's another one of these guys coming over the decks of the Surtees, and it's been a pretty bloody good day. But it is getting dark, so what do you reckon? Mosey yeah, on back? Yeah, Mosey on back's been, well, I was got saying, epic session. It's just yeah. been fish after fish all day. Haven't really gone off the chew. It just varied a little bit in size, but um, sorry, mate, I kind of got you on that one. You did. You definitely did. No, well done. Don't drip the brush on me. I don't deserve that treatment. <laughs> No, that was good fishing, no, and uh, well oh, done on yeah. your, your fish, mate. No monsters today, but that's all right. Fish of the day actually went to old Benjamin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Old Benjamin the cripple. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, we'll pop that guy back in the drink. We'll mosey on back to Manu Bay and... Uh, consequence, I guess. Yeah. For me. The consequence. Yeah. Back in the drink. Hard luck, Scotty. Yeah, thanks, mate. This is going to be great fun. <laughs> great fun for me. 